Today on On.NET Show, we're finding out how you can do amazing things and solve problems in production using Azure Monitor, Snapshot Debugging, Snap Points, and Log Points. And we have Isaac here to show us how. Welcome to the On.NET Show. Uh, today, it's uh, Christos Matskas. I am a Product Marketing Manager, and I'm the interim host. And we have Isaac Levin. Hello. He's an Applications Developer Manager, and he works with our customers in the field. And today, we're going to be talking about black magic. No, uh, we're going to be talking about um, debugging with uh, Azure Monitor and uh, App Insights and snapshot debugging. Right. So what is Azure Monitor? So Azure Monitor is the overall suite of solutions that exist inside of Azure to provide a better experience for developers and IT professionals. And part of that uh, used to be a tool called App Insights. Uh, now that's rolled into the Azure Monitor suite. And yeah, so if people don't know much about uh, App Insights, it's the application performance management tool that's inside of Azure. Um, and it gives you a lot of interesting abilities, such as uh, it's looking at performance issues, and obviously the biggest thing in this particular scenario is looking at how we fix errors in production when they arise. Right. So does that mean that I need to run my application on Azure to be able to, you know, take advantage of no, Azure? App Insights is very great because uh, it's any platform and any programming language. So just regardless of any app your application is hosted or what it's written as, you can use Application Insights. So on-prem, on the cloud. Anywhere? J Java, Ruby, Go, nice. Node.js, and obviously .NET. Excellent. So now I was a developer before I moved into marketing. Uh, and I know that debugging is always tricky, right? Uh, you are handed a problem, and you have to find out what the issue was. So how do, um, how do Snapshot Debugging and Azure Monitor help you as a developer to fix problems. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things that we've done uh, throughout our careers as developers is when somebody knocks at your desk and says, hey, I have a production issue, what's the first thing that you do? Close you know, depend your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Depending on your situation, you might have some tools that others don't. You might be able to use uh, a lower level environment to be able to triage these issues. You might be able to get access to replicated production data. Um, in some situations, you might have to just parse logs. Uh, and but there is one thing that some developers, uh, probably most developers, have had to do at least once in their career, and that's attached to production using an instance of Visual Studio, which takes down the entire production application or the live or remote application, um, which is a terrible experience for end users if they expect to use it. Exactly. And how can we leverage Azure Monitor? Then is there a feature there that can help us? Exactly. So uh, inside of the Azure Monitor suite and Application Insights directly, there is a feature for .NET developers and Visual Studio Enterprise customers that exists called Snapshot Debugger. And what Snapshot Debugger does is it gives you a a point in time uh, collection of that exception that's thrown in production or your remote server. Uh, with you giving the ability for you to open in Visual Studio, take a look at it, and then in some scenarios, you even have the ability to attach to it as well. Nice. So that means I don't have to redeploy my application, right? That's correct. And I can still use the release version of the .NET version of the yeah, app, Yeah, so right? uh, again, the most important thing is that all that you need on the production server is symbols. So wow. um, nice. you know, if you configure your build pipeline to include symbols as well with the deployment, you're good to go. Cool. And I think you have a demo. For I us do, here, right? I do. So one of the first things that I want to show is just how we get um, to snapshot debugger content through the Azure portal. So I have an application here. Uh, as you can see, that's nothing very fancy. Uh, it's an Angular 7 application with a .NET Core backend. Um, this one is hosted in Azure, but I also have one hosted uh, in a VM on my machine. So no Azure Touch at all. I can pull that up right here. So as you can see. I have this hopping around, and this works as expected. Uh, wait for things to load up, right? But see, as I'm getting particular errors here, and I don't know what they are. So one of the things that I can do as a part of App Insights is I can drill all the way in from, uh, this is the App Insights blade of uh, Azure. I can take a look at the failure section, mm -hmm. look at particular failures that exist in exceptions, and then uh, on the far right-hand side here, you'll notice that I have a list of sample operations that I can click on. If I click on any of these, I go to an end-to-end -end transaction detail that exists for this particular exception. So as you can see, there's a lot of valuable data here. And one thing that, is set that I can see very abundantly is it looks like that I'm trying to do a database call, and I'm getting a SQL data 
uh, exception. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I'd like to point out here is that I can actually open a debug snapshot. So what that allows me to do is it gives me a, a lot of valuable information and metadata around the exception. And it gives me a, an ability to download a file, which mm -hmm. I can then open in Visual Studio proper. So would you like to see that? Yes, please. All right. So I'm not going to click download here because sometimes the files can be fairly big. They can range from 50 to hundreds of megabytes. Okay. So what I did is I downloaded a file from earlier today. Nice. So when you open that file, it gives you a, a warning saying following file comes from an untrusted source, which I think is very funny because the source is Azure. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to uh, not acknowledge that at this sure. point. Yep. So if I click yes here, what mm -hmm. it's going to do is it's going to actually open a Diag session file. So right. you know, people that have experience uh, doing debugging for a long time, Diag session file are very well known. Uh, so what this comes up here is it gives me a mini dump file summary. Okay. And this mini dump file summary gives me a lot of information about where the dump file came from, what the process name was, some of the modules that are attached with it. Um, and the most important thing, it allows us the ability to debug with manage only code. Very so nice. I can actually see the actual code, the line that through the exception. Mm -hmm. So if I click on debug managed only, what it's going to do is it's going to load all the symbols. And then once that's done, it's going to actually throw the exception that happened. So as you can see here, I have a system data SQL client. Cannot open server, my database name requested by the login because the IP address isn't allowed to access the server. Yeah. So what that means is that this application actually hits a SQL Azure database. And since the, uh, the server, my local machine, doesn't have the IP address added in SQL Azure for protection reasons, I'm not able to actually use that application from that VM unless I add the firewall rule. So this stops the application from doing something it shouldn't be allowed to do in this particular sense. But I wouldn't know this unless Snapshot Debugger and Application Insights gave me this all this information right off the get-go. Nice. That's, that's amazing, right? So yeah. Azure App Insights and Azure Monitor give us the ability to capture a snapshot in time. And then we can see that snapshot either in the portal and then maybe drill down a little bit there. But if we want to go all developer level, then we can download that and open in Visual Studio. Correct. Yeah. So end-to-end -end flow from, hey, I have an exception on my desk and someone's bothering me, all the way to, oh, this is the exact error message. This is some of the locals that are showing up here. Uh, and this is the exact reason why you're having this issue. So just think of how long in the past it would take to get this information, right? Yep. And this is just one small piece of Azure Monitor, right? There's all sorts of other interesting features as well. Mm -hmm. I believe that on other previous episodes of On.net, we've talked about them. So I highly recommend taking a look at them as well. Sounds great. All the, all the pain removed, right? Because you don't have to recreate the steps. Snaps of debugging does it for you. We Correct. capture the steps and we give you the error message. Yeah, and there's one additional uh, feature of, of Snapshot Debugger that's very, very valuable, right? So I talked about earlier, in situations in the past, we would attach to our remote debugger, yep. right? So taking down our production applications. What if I told you you had the ability to do a very similar experience, but it wouldn't take down your production application? And that would be amazing. Right? So inside of Snapshot Debugger, you have the ability to connect to uh, the Azure platform as a service offering called App Service. Mm -hmm. uh, so Visual Studio Enterprise customers have the ability to do this. It's as simple as going into Visual Studio, going into Cloud Explorer, clicking on attached to Snapshot Debugger, and going away with it. And I'd love to show it for you if you have some time. Yeah, please. Awesome. So I have an application hosted here. This is the same application that I showed over here, right? So my Tour of Heroes application. Mm -hmm. So if I open up the solution in Visual Studio, uh, there's some code here, right? That's very, very good looking code. I, you know, everybody should follow these programming practices <laughs> that I'm doing. One thing that I want to be able to do is I want to be able to add a snap point to our application. And a snap point is similar to a breakpoint, but it gives us the ability to collect uh, information from Azure. So how I would do that is I'd open my solution, obviously, and then in Cloud Explorer, I would just right click on our particular app service and then attach a snapshot debugger. Right. It's going to ask for some information, like what the resource you want to connect to is, and then a storage account to actually store the snap points. Right. So you click Attach. And then this is what it's going to do, is it's going to make sure that the uh, snapshot debugger extension is turned on to your app service. And then it's going to start collecting modules. So these modules are going to basically make sure that your local version of the application is synced to the one that's in the cloud. So this does take a little bit of time, and you'll see some things come down at the bottom uh, importing modules. But once you have that actually turned on, uh, this start collection will light up. So one thing that we'll see here is that this is purple. Mm -hmm. Right? When we click on the left-hand side, usually when we're in Visual Studio, it's red for breakpoints, right? But for snap points, they're actually purple. And this is a way to differentiate between the two. So um, when you have a particular snap point and you can hover over it, it'll say click 
start update collection to activate the snap point. And so once this particular start collection comes up, like right here, you can right. click that. And then our, our attached is, is created, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll see a message here. Visual Studio is debugging an application running in Azure. Just think about that. So you can go to this application. You can do everything that you want with it. And it's not going to take down the application at all while you're doing. So if I go over here and I just click one of my heroes, right? So I click Scott Guthrie, the red shirt man. So if I click there, it's going to come up and it's going to, the application is still working. Yeah. However, if I go into Visual Studio, on the right-hand side, I have a snapshot. Boom. So I can view that snapshot. And what this is is the exact same experience that we have inside of Visual Studio. Okay. Right? So sim similar to how we did when we downloaded the die accession file yeah. and we went through that process, this is the exact same file that's being downloaded locally to a machine right now. So this does take a little bit of time depending on the size. Mm -hmm. um, but once we actually get that downloaded, this uh, line 54 will be fired exactly like a breakpoint would in a right. debugging experience. Okay. So we'll wait for this to load up. Um, additional things that you can do as well with snap points is you can actually configure what's called log points. Okay. And log points uh, allow you to send particular uh, messages to our output window in Visual Studio or as well to back to App Insights. So in situations where you have particular um, lines of code or maybe you have a function that has a ton of parameters in it and you know one particular parameter usually throws the exception or mm -hmm. causes the problem, right? So being able to set a snap point and, and configure a log point that says this particular parameter is X. Okay. And then it'll give you an output message for that, so, which is something that ends up being very valuable as you're going through your triage solution. Right? So as you can see here, it downloaded the uh, die accession file, the mm -hmm. snap point, and it's loading all my symbols and making sure that it, things sync properly. And once that's done, we're going to have that debugging experience on line 54 like we talked about earlier. Excellent. So one thing that we need to make clear here, because I've, I've never worked with snap points before, mm -hmm. um, is that prior to this, you could only capture unhandled exceptions. That would be something thrown and then snapshot debugger will generate a snapshot and then you'll be able to find the problem. Yep. But it was only for things that you didn't manage or you didn't control. It was all yes. unmanaged code. Now what we get is the ability to add more value by having snap points and log points Correct. to allow us to do more fine-tuned uh, debugging without having to take the application down while we're running in production. And that's very valuable because sometimes the data that comes in production is not the same as the one you have in test or dev, right? Correct. Yeah, very much so. So I like to think of Snapshot Debugger having two modes, right? So you have a very passive mode, which mm -hmm. is your application is throwing exceptions as it's going about its business, and you can actually go out and download those files and open them in Visual Studio. So that's passive, right? And then you have these this reactive mode, which is I'm talking about right now, which is attaching to a remote session. And I think both are very valuable in their own way. Uh, in this particular situation, when you're doing snap points and log points, it just gives you another thing to be able to leverage in your uh, developer tool belt to triage application permissions. So it looks like this is still loading. Uh, so you, we might need to, oh, there we go. Visual Studio gave me a little message saying that you know it's, it's taking, a, taking a little bit of time. Yep. Um, so when this is actually up and running, uh, we can actually get, like I said, line 54 to fire that particular thing. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So right here, as you can see, we've already loaded up, and on line 54 here, we have a snap point that's been hit. So one thing that's very, very cool here, I can hover over Hero, mm -hmm. and what it will actually do is it's going to load via tooltip Scott Guthrie. Nice. So this is a debugging experience, right, connected to a, an application that's in the cloud. So I wanted to show you one thing as well with log points that I think is pretty valuable. So if I right click on that particular snap point that I created and go to actions, mm -hmm. I can create an action here and I can send it to the output window or I can send it to our application log back up to Azure Monitor. So I can type in anything here. So this is, takes in string interpolation. So I can go hero.name, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can close that, save, and then re-upload. And that's going to update my collection. And then if I go back, and let's just choose Michael Jordan, for instance. A snap point is going to create it, and then you'll see that the log point says hero Michael Jordan. Very nice. So instead of having to hop around and parse different things, you can actually get messages inside the diagnostic tools window uh, for a particular message that makes the most sense to you. That's extremely valuable. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's snapshot debugger in a nutshell. I hope that people 
use it. You know, I'm a huge fan of it. I, like, I, like you said earlier, I work with customers every day, and when I show them this, they kind of think it's not real. They think there's some sort of uh, smoke and mirrors going on behind the scenes, but no, it's definitely real. You have the ability to connect to a production application without taking down production. And just think about that for a little bit. Excellent. So today we uh, learned about snap points and log points and snaps of debugging and all the amazing things that you can do with Azure Monitor. And I want to thank Isaac f for being with us today and we'll see you next time.